ladies and gentlemen, we present the TV Lark with our three stars, Stephen Murray, John Pertwee and Leslie Phillips. Sometimes, when I'm at home in the evenings, Mrs. Boyle and I, we want... Oh, I didn't know our Robin was married. Didn't you, Pertwee? Well, he was bound to be, really. Why? Well, he's so good-looking. <laughs> and they do say, um... <laughs> but they say that with the ladies, he's, he's a bit of a, um... <laughs> go on, sir, go on! Well, I've heard that, um... <laughs> Look, if you've quite finished with my reputation, my wife's listening, you know. What? Oh, sorry, pardon. It's all right, madam. We were talking about somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> we weren't, you know. <laughs> uh, mate, please. I've just forgotten her birthday. Come along, Mr. Phillips. I don't think we should be associating with a bounder and a cad. <laughs> oh, it's nice to know one has friends. If any of you can remember, I was saying earlier that sometimes my wife and I, uh, happy birthday, dear, card following, <laughs> we sit at home in the evenings wondering what load of cod's wallop will turn up on the telly next. If we switch to the TTV channel, we wonder if anything will turn up at all. And uh, when Henry Rovis had to send Mr. Murray's production team out filming, a blank screen is a lot safer. Oh, P.S., a very happy birthday, dear. <laughs> Good morning, gentlemen. Are we to do the next episode of Ship Ahoy with Jolly, um... Unfortunately for me, you are. In order that I should stand any chance at all of being able to sleep at night, I've arranged for the writers to set this week's episode in a shore base. You are to film it at Admiralty Records office in Somerset. Uh, 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 Admiralty Records office. <laughs> yes, uh, uh, do you mean what we're actually going to, uh, I mean, uh... I mean, actually, inside the building where, I mean, you know, where the, where the lordships uh, keep their books and... <laughs> Bertwee, are you all right? Uh, well, no, uh, no, I'm not. Uh, no, I mean, you, you, uh, you carry on, sir. Take no notice of me. Gaunt cheeks and me. Pale counting in an in I suppose you struck down by the twinging screws again. No, sir, no. Much worse this time. It's the creeping disaster call. <laughs> A creeping disaster, course, sir. They're ready to dig to the ADT. They're running me to the ADT. They're running me to the What'd you get from your grandpa, sir? <laughs> well, I should give them back again. Not doing you any good at all. <laughs> Neither is this pantomime. Now, now, whether you like it or not, Pertwee, you are going to Admiralty Records office to film this program. But I can't, sir. I mean, 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 I can't. I mean, you can, you can see the skype on me. I can indeed. But a panic. Why? Remains a mystery. Uh, just a minute, sir. Didn't Pertwee have a relative at Records office? Quite possibly. As far as I remember, he had one everybody else in the service. I don't see how the family could have omitted records as a vantage point. Well, look, never you mind Uncle Tobias. Thank you. Take my voice. Forget him. The family out. We don't talk about him in this company. Not after the company mixed with in Cairo. <laughs> But surely, Tobias Pertry was the one who signed all our demob papers when we left the Navy. Shocking handwriting, too. He's <laughs> back! Look at that! <laughs> the crazy disaster calls it on the move. I can phone the ambulance, gents, please. I'll just, I'll just lie ever so quiet on the desk until I hear them whiz it up with a little bell all of a tingling. Pertry, get off my desk. Why, sir, isn't it safe? <laughs> oh, I mean, everything's the same these days, isn't it? I'm, no pride in their work at the factory. That's the trouble. Whatever happened to the craftsmen of England, eh? Answer me that. Don't bother, because I'll tell you. <laughs> How can we have optimists when we keep knocking up rickety old muck in plywood? Right? Give us the tools, and we'll bodge it up with plastic. <laughs> Never in the field of human Oh, oh shut up. up. He's absolutely right, though, sir. I mean, only last week I bought a gadget for peeling onions, but it was absolutely useless. Why? Well, I can't eat onions. <laughs> really? You can change the subject as often as you'd like, but it won't make any difference. You are still going to Admiralty Records office to film this program. Yeah, very well, sir. Perhaps we should be able to get some assistance from Mr. Percy's uncle Tobias. Now it's Mr. Percy. Don't Mr. bother. Well, if he's still there, how you get this film is up to you. All I ask is that for once you do get some, without yet another monumental claim for damages. <laughs> Oh, 
right. We may as well go in and introduce ourselves. Uh, could we go back to the studios and say they wouldn't let us in? No, certainly not. I mean, you're making a terrible mistake, you know, sir. I mean, if we go in there, if we go in there, anything could happen, you know. It's down for Anarchy Records office, sir. I mean, that means they'll know all about it, sir. What we did in the service? Who we did in the service? <laughs> for how much, you know, I don't like it, I... I don't like it one tiny, tiny bit at all, but I don't like it, I don't, I don't, I don't, no. No, I don't let sleeping dogs keep on regardless, I <laughs> You mark my words that it'll end up in tears, it will end up in tears. We'll finish up with a flaming great boo <laughs> all round. We will, I'm telling you, we'll, 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 we'll see how it started there. <laughs> As we stop being ridiculous. Oh, come off it, sir. You're asking him to break the habit of a lifetime. <laughs> <laughs> Shut the pair of you! Temper? Temper? I am not in a temper. You are, you know, sir. Oh, I'm not. I'm perfectly calm. <laughs> You're not, you know. Stephen's definitely a bit narky. <laughs> we can tell. Yes. Here, Mr. Phillips. Hmm? Have you noticed how when Mr. Murray gets upset, his ears go ever so, ever so pink? <laughs> oh, yes. Well, they do. <laughs> And he puffs and blows all the time. I am what? Puffing and blowing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. I... I got the car. <laughs> Suddenly. Yes. Now, stop the pair of you and let's get inside. The one thing about it, that's when he can't slam the door in our faces. Water. It's a revolving one. Because they've got a perfect right to have a revolving door if they wish. Well, all I said... I was heard that... what you said. There's nothing wrong with my ears. No, except that they're ever so, ever so pink. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Kindly follow me, if that's not asking too much. Honestly, of all the pair of... cantankerous, argumentative, idiotic... Good morning. Oh, good morning. Lovely day. Mm, not for me, it's not. I like the car. Oh, what a shame. Thank goodness I never suffer from... <laughs> <laughs> uh, we are expected. We're from Troutbridge Television. Both of you? Uh, both of us. There are three of us. Uh, uh, at least there were. Where's Pert we gone? Oh, she's a long, thin gentleman with a frightened look who was with you in the revolving door. Yes. Oh, he went right round and out into the street again. You <laughs> good. Mr. Phillips, you stay here and arrange for us to see Commander Tobias Pertwee whilst I go out and drag Uncle's corruption nephew in by the front of his neck. Oh, please. He can't be. Uncle's son will still be here, sir. It's vital. Well, that's what the Wren said. Commander Tobias Pertwee started collecting his pension about a month ago. She's arranged for us to see the officer who's taken his place. But we've got to get out of here, sir. It's urgent. Our oh, Dean Mob believes doesn't stop until tomorrow. Let's come back the day after, so we'd be safe then. No. Open the door, Mr. Phillips. Keeping Commander, uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, Pearson. Thank you, Commander Pearson. Waiting. Then let for months. Open the door, Mr. Phillips. Commander Pearson. Right, right, yes, yes. Go, go, come in, all of you. Thank you, sir. Very nice of you. Excuse me a minute. But we, it'll end up in tears. Come in here. Take those dark glasses off. <laughs> Sorry about that, sir. Uh, not at all, not at all. Well, how do you do? Well, uh, it's jolly sporting of you chaps to come down like this. Jolly sporting. I word, you must be keen. Well, not really, sir. We were ordered to come. Really? Jolly odd. Typical of course, wasting all that money on travelling and the whole thing could have been done by post. By post? Well, how can you take a film by post? Eh? I have a nasty feeling we're not all talking about the same thing. So have I. Commander Pearson, why do you think we've come here? Me? Well, to collect them, of course. Collect them? Collect what? Your papers are calling you to the Navy. You're coming back. <laughs> what? Lieutenant Bunny, Sub Lieutenant Phillips, and Chief Petty Officer Pertwee, welcome home. Joking, 
Negative, I'm not. Ah! The leg. The leg. Uh, uh, would you mind explaining what you just said, sir? Oh, certainly, certainly. I thought, I thought you knew. Your release from the service was an error. You're all going back in the Navy. Good gracious. Lummy. <laughs> I told you it would end up in tears. And you were right. Mind you, we're still trying to figure out how my predecessor, Commander Tobias Pertwee, came to release you in the first place. <laughs> oh. Oh, I see. We can't make head or tail of it. I have an awful feeling I can. Pertwee, you will tell us the full unvarnished story of how you talked Uncle Tobias into this little lot. One day, won't you? I know nothing about it at all. <laughs> Complete and utter mystification to me. Uh, marvellous bit of luck we spotted it before your D-mob leave ran out. Oh, wonderful, yes. Positively preachy. <laughs> <laughs> Look, but if you had to recall somebody, why didn't you recall my uncle Tobias? Oh, we probably shall. For his court martial. <laughs> you know, I, I thought all along it was a bit odd. Letting chaps of skill and experience like us go. I mean, you can see that was his point of view. I mean, it was, a, it was a criminal waste of manpower. I mean, training me as a navigating officer must have cost them... Uh, Judging by the results, about fourpence. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And fourpences don't grow on trees. I mean, you'll find them in little, little pots on the mantelpiece. So, uh, hey, can somebody lend me fourpence? Why, do you want to go on the refresher course? <laughs> No, I just thought we ought to ring Povey at TTV and tell him we'll be a year or two late getting back. <laughs> oh, no, no, you know by now. We posted off his recall papers yesterday. <laughs> what? You mean he's coming back as well? That's all we needed. Rather, I must say, your uncle did himself proud. Must have cost you a bomb. Yeah, it did. I don't need that, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, I know nothing about it, Mr. Phillips. Well? Your papers and railway ones, gentlemen. Uh, have you got Able Seaman Johnson and Leading Seaman Goldstein with you? Oh, yeah, uh, they're with us all right, but I wonder if you'd mind telling Goldstein about this somehow. I don't fancy the idea. Uh, neither would I. <laughs> when Kathy knows he's back in the service again, he'll have his aunt Morpeth rush down planting bombs in the House of Commons, <laughs> sitting down on the railings, tying herself to the Square until he's out again. <laughs> Ah, uh, you leave him to me. I've got to give him his railway warrant anyway. Oh, I doubt if he'll accept it, sir. Why? In his book, it would be treason. <laughs> They're British railways, so he'll probably prefer to walk. <laughs> Incidentally, where do we report this time? Uh, Portsmouth, of course. The dockyard chaps are de-cocooning your ship now. But Trowbridge? Yeah. You mean we'll all be serving in Trowbridge again? Or rather, she shouldn't have been mothballed either. Sure. <laughs> Uncle Tobias must have run amok. <laughs> Possibly. Possibly, sir. But that's nothing to the muck that's going to be running about when his nephew gets back to Portsmouth. I can practically hear the rosters rubbing that great maulers with glee now. Yeah. For them, getting you back must be like winning the pool. <laughs> well, come along, gentlemen. We'd better deliver the TTV mobile van back to the studios and then look up the next train to Portsmouth. Well, I hope it's a slow one that stops everywhere. Well, are there any others? Oh, come on. <laughs> Come on, while they've still got a few stations left to stop at. Right, you are, my lucky lad. Here we are, the dockyard gate. Now, come on, out we go. Well, it was very nice of you to suggest we come by taxi, Chief. Much nicer than coming by train. Not at all, Johnson, friend of mine, not at all. Our last little in Timmy Street, if you might say. Must have cost a flaming fortune. <laughs> easy come, easy go, Goldstein. Now, let's see, uh, how much on the clock? Uh, four pounds, eight and six. And very reasonable, too. Right, pay the man, Johnson. Yes. Yeah. What? <laughs> now, it started, innit? it? You said you was going to pay for it. He did, didn't he, Chappie? Chappie? <laughs> Chappie, where you gone? He's inside the top gate with me. <laughs> you're rotten, you are. Both of you, rotten. In fact, you're the biggest pair of rottens in Rottendom. <laughs> oh, you 
And he got four pence, ten. Lovely. Tell him to keep the change for the tip. Uh, <laughs> all right. Oh, all right. Then here you are, my man. Don't spend it all at once like I just had to. <laughs> oh, my fat those lolly. <laughs> Come on, you great fat potty pudding. <laughs> I should be obliged if Chief Petty Officer Pertwee would cease to address Abel Seaman Johnson except where necessary in the line of duty. What are you complaining about? You enjoyed the ride, didn't you? No. Because I had a sneaking suspicion that this was going to happen all the way. Well, there you are, then. You weren't disappointed. <laughs> if I were you, I'd so I'd quit now. Let him chat about it much longer and it'll end up that you owe him a favour. Yeah, well, I don't owe you one for a start. You vanished a bit sharpish and all, didn't you? <laughs> Our Welsh valleys may be green, but I'm not. Yeah. <laughs> right. Now then, let's see where we have to report. I suppose the best thing is to walk around of old Thundergut's office and have a word with him. Hold it. Hold it. Where do you three think you're going? Oh, morning, officer. Uh, we've just been recalled for duty. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> They're warped. Every one of them is warped. What are your names? Goldstein. Oh, ah. Uh, Johnson. Oh, uh, ah. Uh, and your name, Chief? <coughs> Pertwee. Oh, uh, ah. Pertwee? <laughs> Blimey! If they've recalled you, we must be at war. Say, come on, lads. Get your tin hats on your bolties. Switch on your radios. The Prime Minister's got a stick to the day on. Ha, ha, ha. is getting a critical on my side. Now, come on, where do we report? You were all on HMS Cutbridge, weren't you? We had that honour. Yes, we had a lot of your crew through here this morning. Now, you report to Captain Povey's office. Yes. Before you go. you tell us something? What? Well, we've got a fair idea how you got out, but what's worrying us is why you had to. <laughs> I'm sure I don't know what you're talking about. Come off it, Chief. We know you. We've been through this place inch by inch and we can't find it. Can't find what? What the heck it was you nicked that was so red hot that you got the old crew discharged and your ship put in mothballs in order to get yourself out. <laughs> <laughs> it's driving us potty. If it was worth all that, you ought to have missed it by now. Come on, be a sport. What was it you did? We got to know. Come on, Dulcie. Just that. What would Mark? We're keeping the rest of the crew waiting. <laughs> it's not a bit of good, sir. You can't get away from it. I mean, you've only got to look in the mirror. I don't wish to look in one, thank you. Mm, I don't blame you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, anyone can see that after our few weeks in Sibby Street, the rust has set in. It most certainly has not. Well, it has, sir. I mean, ask anyone. There's, there's no getting away from it. Your uniform is ridiculously tight. <laughs> Stephen has put on a pound or two. <laughs> don't be ridiculous. <laughs> of course I have. Oh, I... You have, you know. I have not. You're getting pink ears again. <laughs> and why shouldn't I? I have as much right to pink ears as the next man. I want to pee here, I'll have it. <laughs> you got... I won't! <laughs> Perhaps the pressure of that tight uniform is sending all the blood to your head. <laughs> Once and for all, this uniform is not tight. <laughs> what is that? One of the brass buttons scoring a bullseye on the lampshade. <laughs> oh, it must have been cheap cotton or what? Uh, Moths don't wear uniforms. <laughs> Whatever it was, your uniform fits a lot better now. Subtle to of slip, once and for all. Hello? Good gracious, Vera, what are you doing here? I'm going down. I, I mean up. How do you like my uniform? Well, it certainly, uh, in places, fits a lot better than now, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> well, a chap can't help noticing, and, uh... <laughs> I mean, if a chap could help it. Huh? Why should a chap? <laughs> cool. <laughs> now you come to mention it, I do see what, uh... Vera, what are you doing in that uniform? Filling it. <laughs> How right you are. But 
Uh, you weren't a, a wren? Oh, yes, I was. And when I heard Captain Tovey had been recalled, I volunteered to come back. Whatever for? Well, I like working for him so much. He's ever so nice. What a funny woman. <laughs> you mean you're going to be his secretary? That's right. Mm. Yeah, I say, Mr. Murray, have you noticed? You've got a button missing on your uniform. Uh, 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 yes, I have. Yeah, it must have popped off because you've got a bit tubby. <laughs> I have not got tubby. Now watch it, ears. <laughs> You're going all of a glow again. <laughs> Mr. Phillips, will you leave my ears out of this? Your ears? What's the matter with you? Oh, oh no, they've gone all pink. I don't care. <laughs> Phase two, puffing and blowing. <laughs> Mr. Phillips, will you kindly... Uh, off. <laughs> cocooning of the ship. Oh, yes, right. Well, I was uh, going to I was, I was, uh, have a word with you about that thing. Where are you now? Yes, sir, I was. Uh, look, I've, uh, I had a word with the foreman, sir, and they're uh, just about to get all the goo off the top deck, sir. Now, I would like to suggest that they stop now, sir. I mean, <laughs> leave things as they are. Right, I mean, I, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean uh, it must have cost hundreds of pounds to put all that cocooning in, cocooning in. They've got in the noon in it on. <laughs> so, I mean, why bother about taking it all off again just because... Ah! Oh! <laughs> ah, gee. I'd say we're getting warm. Wouldn't you, Mr. Phillips? Would I? <laughs> you would. Well, if you insist, huh? <laughs> but what about? About why the chief, with his novel little ways, found it necessary to have discharged, the ship mothballed, and all the rest of it, to get himself out of it sharpish. Why, don't look at me, sir, I know nothing about it, sir. I'm as amazed and astonished and astounded as the next man, <laughs> Are you really, Chief? Yes, I am. Oh, oh don't keep doing that, Captain Pose. I still wish you'd stop wearing rubber heels. They're not fair. <laughs> God, God. Yes, Chief? Dismiss before I belt you, wife. Good morning. Well, gentlemen, this is um, this is all a bit of a surprise, isn't it? Now, how are they getting along with the deep cocooning of Prudwich? The bridge is finished, sir. They just got most of the goo off the top deck of the bridge. Capital, capital. You know, Sibby Street was all right, but uh, I'm not sorry to be back. Uh, neither am I, sir. Although Mr. Murray's uniform is a bit tight on the. I shan't <laughs> warn you again. Oi! You lot! Come up here! Uh, I think it was that chap in the flat hat by the top of the gangplank. Oh, the foreman of the dockyard men. Mm. Yeah, what is it, my man? Come up here. There's so much of this on. Yes, right, sir. Uh, well, if you don't need me for a bit... <laughs> I've, uh, I've just remembered one or two little items that need my urgent personal attention. Don't, don't need you for a minute, Pertwee. 
course we need you. I, I, uh, I want, uh, well, uh, that is, I, uh, I wondered if, uh, yes, uh, well, I know it's silly, but, uh, well, uh, yes, sir. well, would you go on up the gang tank ahead of us and pipe me aboard? <laughs> oh, Captain Povey, sir. You want a swank? No, 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 no. No, no, it doesn't matter. It's, it's just, well, well, it was only, I, I mean... Uh, yes, I know, no, I understand. You leave it to Pert Weaster. Give it a minute, and as soon as you step aboard, I'll play your tune. <laughs> so kind, Pert So kind. Oh, now I've seen everything. <laughs> and I wish I hadn't. Ready when you are, Captain Powell, sir. All right, Captain. Follow me aboard. Keep in step, mind. Keep in step. Uh, we're back, all right. Stop talking back there. I didn't say it. Thanks, Tom. I'll stop that again, sir. <laughs> Don't you stop the trumpet. Stop the trumpet, <laughs> is over, I'd like a word in your ear, though. There's, there's so much of it funny been going on. Yes, well, now play your signature tune. I really must Stay be... Stay where you are, Patrick. Oh, getting much warmer now, I'd say, Mr. Phillips. Practically red hot, sir. That, what do you mean, some of a bit funny? Well, look for yourself, sir. We've removed the cocooning from everything on this deck. But when we did, there were now underneath. Absolutely now. <laughs> Everything you could unscrew or unbolt were gone. What? Aye. No guns, no sea boats, no radar, no rafts, no life belts, no nothing. No wonder he had to get out in a hurry. But we, I demand an explanation for this. <laughs> Stop! Stop that, but we. Where are the guns and the sea boats? And... <laughs> Leslie Phillips, Stephen Murray and John Pertwee working their passage in the Navy Lark, written by Laurie Wyman. Leslie Phillips was the sub-lieutenant, Stephen Murray was the number one, John Pertwee was the chief petty officer, Captain Povey was played by Richard Caldicott, Commander Bracewell was Michael Bates, Abel and Johnson was Ronnie Barker, Taffy Goldstein was Tony Levens, and Vera was played by Janet Brown. The recorded production was by Alistair Scott Johnston. <laughs> So the TV lark reverts to the Navy lark and at this time next week on 4 Extra we'll join the